modules, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're going to be going over modules for MSF Console, or Metasploit in general. We're going to go over exploit modules, auxiliary modules, and post modules. So first off, we're going to go into exploit modules. Now, exploit modules, we've already used them a little bit. Um, you do use, exploit, hit tab a few times, and there's uh, 1,200 of these. So I'm not going to list them all. Now, well, let's do it. List, 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 and then done. There's a ton of mo modules in there that you can use. Um, and we've already gone over the Windows ones. There's 864 Windows ones, SMB, and there's those for SMB. So you know how to use this module. And you know how to look around in it. You know how to search for it. But we really haven't covered um, anything outside of exploit modules. So we're going we're gonna to spend some time in auxiliary modules, post modules, and, and touch really quickly on payload modules. So first off, um, use auxiliary. Now there's 693 of these currently, but I want to make um, a little bit certain on show you, uh, or I want to make um, it clear on what some of these are. Auxiliary modules are basically anything that don't fit in the other categories. Um, like admin and the directory there, it means that it's administrative. Uh, so for an example of that, let's just show you um, the auxiliary admin MS SQL, MS SQL exec. So we admin MS SQL, MS SQL exec. So we show options there and we see that basically all this does is takes a username and password for MS SQL box and issues a command. Actually runs XP command shell, which is a, a function inside of MS SQL that's been disabled for a while. Um, but this executes that if it's uh, available and it, it even tries to re-enable it if possible if you can log in as, as a um, system administrator or, or SA. So you'll see that this is our host right here. Now that our host is the remote host that we want to use. But if you're using a scanner module, so auxiliary scanner, and there's 369 of these, scanner, um, HTTP, HTTP version. So showing the version, all this does is shows the, um, the server version if it responds back as a server. So let's just, for fun, we're gonna go hack Google, as I see Darren cringing in the corner. So our hosts is www.google.com. We're gonna run it. And it basically what this says is say, it comes back and says, these IPs came back with GWS as the server. So if you ever, if you ever look at the HTTP headers that go back and forth when you're surfing a website, this, all this does is pulls that site back and says in the server header, it says GWS. And you notice that we set our hosts cool thing about our hosts, when you see that it's a scanner module, is that you can use um, a lot of different formats. If I set our host to 74.125.239.0/24, that would work. And that would run against all those hosts. I can also do 1-15 or 45, um, and then I can comma, or I'm sorry, space, and then 192.168.0.1. And th that's valid our hosts as well. So you can do a lot of different formats, including file colon forward slash whatever. So if I have a file in temp slash hosts, I don't actually have that file. Um, I can use that as well as a host. And it's basically a line separated file. So you have 192.168.1.1, 1.2, and then maybe an exclusion list that removes some of those and says, I only want these, and it will hit every single one of those files. So that's one of the cool things about auxiliary modules is that it does have a scanner type. So outside of that, and I, and I encourage you to look through all of the auxiliary modules because there's a ton, there's a bunch that do all these amazing things outside of the exploit modules. 
I mean, let's let me show you just aux scanner HTTP. There are 146, 146 different auxiliary modules just for HTTP traffic. So let's see. No, the other type in auxiliary is server. So server has a bunch of different things as well. So one of the cool things is um, the capture module. So I can say capture SMB. Now what I can do is essentially running, oops. Um, so right now I think that's a little bit broken for some reason. But what I can, what I can do is I can run a, a Samba server or SMB server or SIFS server. And then whenever someone tries to connect to me with any share that they want, it will then capture the login credentials and passwords that they're trying in the MTLM v1 or v2 method, uh, which is not straight, uh, it's not straight hashing, but you'll, you'll get the gist once we get further down the line on other segments and we'll explain some of those. Let's just use aux server. Let's get some kind of capture HTTP basic. So let's get one demo done. Okay, so if I go to this URL, it asks me for a username and password. It says secure site. I'm going to add, obviously I'm logging in as admin. And then this, this is my secure password. Hit OK and it says not found Apache server 2.2.9. So obviously I'm not actually running an Apache server. And we go back and you can't see that very well, but you can see, hey, credential collected, admin, this is my secure password. Cool stuff. So if you want to prank your friends or whatever, um, set up an HTTP server, have them log into it, and there you go. You can set up anything you want. You can even set change. So let's go back real quick and actually show you. I can edit this module, surfing down, shows what it sends back. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There's response. Where does it get response from? 401 authorized. Uh, I don't know why it's not, where it sent, pulls the password from or the, the server stuff from. But you should be able to set the HTML that it shows up after it logs in. You can iframe it or whatever you want to get back to it. So, so let's quit out of that. Let's go to post modules. Now post modules, oops. Use post. Post modules are a little different from auxiliary or exploit because they run post exploitation. So post exploitation is once you have a session of any type, a, a PHP interpreter, a Windows interpreter, um, a command shell. If you just have a command shell, so it can run these things. So post, let's see, Windows, post Windows gather check VM. What this post module will do is simply check to see if you know a, a machine that you're on is a virtual machine. I mean, there's a ton in there. One one of my favorites is um, the ARP scanner. So once you're actually exploited a machine, and we'll definitely go into this uh, in other segments on on exploiting hosts and pivoting around and stuff like that. But um, if you're on a on a system on a Windows system, you can actually do an ARP scan directly from that um, exploited host. So victim one, you can do the ARP scan from and see what hosts are around it. And um, it's a lot less loud, I guess, a lot less chatty than um, doing a full TCP scan or a ping sweep or a scan like that. Um, and there's tons in there. I, you should definitely look around on that. One of, another one of my favorites, I don't know if you can see this very well or not, but is the WLAN profile, if you didn't know already. Windows 7 or Vista and above saves your password in clear text on, on your, um, for your wireless configuration. So if you go to 17 different places or you have your configuration for your Windows, uh, for your house and then work and then your mom's house, um, all of those passwords for your wireless configs are stored in clear text in your system. So if someone gets on the system, they can then just run this one module and get it. Um, we'll definitely show that in an upcoming episode because that's one of my favorites. And then finally is the payloads. So use payload, Windows, Meterpreter, reverse TCP. Now this is, this is a, a module type that people really aren't as familiar with using just because you can use MSF payload, MSF encode, and MSF venom to um, create these payloads on the command line. But I like to do it inside of 
inside of uh, Metasploit simply because now I can actually see what options it needs and set those options, save those options, and actually do generate dash H and see what other things that I can do on this thing. It's an easier way of getting into the payload generation and getting you know, executables. And, and the cool thing is you can actually see that this thing supports a ton of different ways of exploiting your shellcode into a C, C Sharp, um, Perl, PowerShell, tons of different things. So what do you think? Hit me up at msf at hack5.org. Stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And thank you again for supporting the show. If you want to support us even further, you can go to hakshop.com and enter the code MUBIX for stickers like these. And until next time, I'm MUBIX. I'll be hacking till the cows come home.